Can you get a picture of me and Mike? Yeah. This little photo, because I took one on my camera. Do you mind coming over? Oh, wait. <laughs> These guys were respectful to me and seemed to have integrity and pride in their work. So my beef's not with the Michaels guys, you know, in this fight. They were just kind of the messengers that I wanted to shoot. You know, it's interesting, or as you're curious about it, but this is the culmination of a fight that I've been trying to stave off, you know, for two years. So that's. This is a defeat, you know, in a way. I couldn't stop this from happening. I wish I didn't have some skin in this game because I could find this much more interesting, I think. But those pipes could be transporting the tar sands onto my property that might, you know, leach out into my soil or into my water. The history on this place, you know, goes back, um, I think they're between a thousand and twelve hundred years ago, the Caddo, C-A-D-D-O, they're the, they're the tribe that, that were in this area. You know, so the Caddo's were here for hundreds of years. My grandfather bought this particular farm in 1948, so it's, it came to be part of the Crawford family in, in 48. And my grandfather ran it, and then my, my father, a retired college professor, he was the farm manager, and then two years ago, um, I left the corporate world in Houston and uh, my dad had said he wanted to retire and that's when I came on board as the farm manager and I was about 2000, 2010 and at the time dad says oh by the way there's a there's a pipeline that wants to come across so you'll need to take that over and that's that's kind of how I got it. I thought I was coming to the farm for the quiet life and you know learn more about the crop production and the cattle and the last two years have been pretty much full-time learning about tar sands and TransCanada and then fighting it and then kind of getting part of the bigger movement. Now right now a company called TransCanada has applied to build a new pipeline to speed more oil from Cushing to state-of-the-art refineries down on the Gulf Coast. It's a massive oil pipeline that would cut the U.S. in two from north to south, carrying 830,000 barrels a day. The Keystone Pipeline, which some Republicans say will add thousands of jobs. But because that was not just normal oil, because that was tar sands oil, because that was the kind of oil that would be in that Keystone XL pipeline. If this thing is approved, you're talking about tar sand, not oil. Tar sand. Tar sands oil, this bitumen, quote, is thick and heavy, and it has to be diluted with a noxious chemical cocktail so it can flow in the pipe. Tens of thousands of people gathered on Washington's National Mall Sunday to urge President Obama to reject the controversial Keystone XL tar sands pipeline. This is a foreign corporation. This is not an American company. This is a Canadian foreign company that's going to actually take land, uh, land from American farmers and then uh, send the dirtiest form of energy through America overseas. And today I'm directing my administration to cut through the red tape, break through the bureaucratic hurdles, and make this project a priority to go ahead and get it done. The Tar Sands Blockade is an informal coalition of landowners, local community members, and organizers from across the country and really across the continent. They're coming together to combine their networks to do whatever it takes to stop the Keystone XL pipeline. Additionally, we hope to, to shape the landscape a little bit about what's possible to shift some of these big NGOs and, and groups that have traditionally stood back and, and, and not participated in direct action, that have not publicly endorsed our tactics. Uh, we hope to, to start to shift more and more in institutions into understanding that when government, when regulators, when industry has corrupted our systems and we've tried to do everything by the rules and just been simply ignored, 
the only responsible thing to do left is to take action and be the agent of change yourself. You need to leave right now. We're leaving. Go. I refuse to leave! No more tar sands! I refuse to leave! Solving the climate crisis is the most important struggle in human history. It's an enormous project. Um, it, should absorb, it should occupy all of our efforts. Um, and I'm going to work tirelessly until it does. You know, and if I have to make sacrifices along the way, well, that's nothing more than my ancestors made in the past on my behalf and that we all benefit from. I have a duty to them. I repay my debt to my ancestors by looking after our descendants. And that is what I'm going to do. And that's why I'm going to continue to fight the Keystone Pipeline and all of this fossil fuel nonsense. Well, most Americans don't know the real purpose of the uh, Keystone Pipeline uh, because uh, the media has done a terrible job of uh, reporting that. Uh, they continue to say, even continue to report the lie that this is about uh, energy independence uh, for America, that we need this uh, oil and therefore we won't have to get it from uh, Arab nations, uh, and et cetera. Uh, in fact, you, you just have to ask a logical question, why are they sending uh, all the way from Canada, right to the heart of America, all the way down to the Gulf Coast, uh, this oil. Uh, they're sending it down there because it's the Gulf Coast. <laughs> and they're sending it specifically to Port Arthur, uh, emphasis on port. <laughs> uh, and then they're going to load it on uh, ships uh, and export it to uh, Europe, uh, into South America, particularly Brazil, and then uh, over into Asia uh, as well, uh, and especially uh, Japan and uh, ultimately China, very, very interested in getting uh, the refined oil uh, out of the sludge. Uh, it's a very filthy process. It's uh, dangerous uh, environmentally. It's dangerous uh, to communities and to human beings and to wildlife. Uh, so we pay the price and we don't even get that oil. We have in Port Arthur, on, on one side you have industry and on the other side, you have neighborhoods. The, the pollution is horrible. The housing is even horrible. Um, they don't fix anything nowhere. The pollution everywhere you go is like um, when you wake up in the morning, it's black stuff all over your car. If you have kids that have asthma or if you have asthma, it's, it's hard to breathe. I've been, I'm from Houston and when I go back to Houston, it's a different atmosphere of breathing, the violence, it's, it's more, it feels safer, it's better neighborhoods. It's horrible out here. It's, they need to do something. The refineries are basically it's the only job you basically can get out here is a refinery job or you can work in a fast food place. Those are your only two choices. There's no middle jobs, no temporary places you can go to like in Houston. My asthma started up like when I was like in the third grade and um, yeah I'd have frequent visits to the doctor they'd have to attach that you know breathing machine on me and you know I just grew up really sick with respiratory infections and respiratory problems so yeah that, that was something that I grew up with and was normal for me after a while. Um, but I mean, it happens with a lot of the people that live there. Um, it's something that that people are familiar with and, you know, it's, it's a 
it's an everyday life thing, you know, your kid has asthma, like, well, welcome to Manchester.